Well, welcome to the garage and a little more introduction for the MR340 Paddler. As we look around, you'll notice an awful lot of boats. And this is because I've been paddling for about seven years and collecting boats obsessively for the last few. I blame Brian Hopkins. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to go through real quick sort of the evolution where I started and where I am now in terms of boats. Hopefully it gives you some ideas uh, of how to evolve yourself from, say, a 14-foot wreck boat into a longer, faster boat. So we're going to start out with where I started, which is the Advanced Elements 10-foot uh, inflatable boat. I still have it. Uh, there's the pump and the ridiculously long, I believe it's a 240 paddle. It is a 10-foot boat that inflates uh, beautifully, still works really well, looks more or less like a boat, and it's 10 foot by about 108 inches or 28 inches, one or the other. Very wide, very stable, great starting point. I bought it for about $300 online back in uh, 2008 or so. From that point, I went to a 17 foot long by 24 inch wide wooden boat built by a gentleman. He was selling it for $600 on Craigslist where I buy all my boats. And it was interesting. It was a good step up, but it weighed about 70 pounds. I no longer have it, but I did refer to it at the time as tank, believing that it could be run over by anything slightly short of a tank. From there, I moved to a QCC 700 in full carbon that I picked up uh, dirt cheap from a shop up here in Wisconsin. Now, I raced the QCC for two years. And after that, I built something. Actually, between uh, my wooden boat and the QCC, I built something else. This is Artemis. This is a sea racer designed by Bjorn Thomason. And I built this in Cedar Strip in 2011, raced it at the MR340 in 2012. And you can see I've got some strips here, some Velcro strips, which are there specifically to add pool noodles to for stabilization. In fact, the pool noodles are buried right under there. And I used that during the race. It worked out actually exceptionally well. But, uh, it turned out that I wanted something a little more stable. That's where the QCC 700 came in. I raced that for two years in 2013 and 2014, and then I changed up again and went to a surf ski because I felt that the QCC 700 was shrinking throughout the race. So by the time I got to Klondike, I couldn't get out of the boat. For those of you who aren't 340 racers, that puts me about 310 miles into the race. So. I created the wall of surf skis. And this one at the top has been my race boat the last two years. This is a Stellar 18S in Advantage layup. It weighs about 35 pounds, give or take. You can see I've got a hydration sy uh, system set up in the back. And this is the boat that I sank uh, in 2016. Here you can see the black carbon fiber patch on the side of the boat. It's held up extremely well. That's a couple layers of carbon fiber after doing some other repairs. I'm sure I'll talk about that repair at some point later on. Uh, I also purchased this boat. Uh, this is an Epic V7. Bought that from uh, Ron down in Kansas City, Ron uh, Ladserfsky. And picked that up because up here in Wisconsin and northern Illinois, we have a lot of shallow water races. So this is a roto-molded boat, plastic boat, which I use in places where I'm likely to beat up the boat. They actually turned out uh, to be quite good in this boat. I enjoy the boat. It's a little bit wider than the Stellar, uh, but it's a good stable boat. Good surf ski for cold water conditions or really hairy conditions, really rocky conditions. Finally, my newest acquisition is this Epic V10 Sport uh, with the black tips. It's about a 35 pound layup, a little less. And I just picked this up 
after the 2016 MR340. So I haven't done much in the way of modification yet. I've been taking vinyl off of it. There are a few problems that I'll have to fix. So you can see the previous owner had vinyl on the surface. And when he tore it off, he tore off chunks of gel coat like that. Now this is a bit of a problem because I like my boats to look clean. So I'm going to have to repair that. And you can see some of the Velcro still on the boat. I'm probably going to try and put a larger hatch up in the front to better match what's in the Stellar, which is a 6 inch hatch. So I'd like to try and get a 6 inch hatch in there. I don't know if that'll work. And in the back, you notice there's no hatch in the back of a V10. And what I'm probably going to do is cut a hatch into it to put a hydration system similar to what I have set up in the Stellar. The reason I put it in the back is back here, the weight will be on the hull, on the inside, very low down, and consequently, it'll improve my center of balance. Very important in these very long races. And this is my wife slash daughter's boat. Uh, it's a wilderness systems, I don't know what it's called, but it's short and it's red. Uh, so that's for them. So you can see, you can see the evolution take place over the years. Uh, when I've had the option in the past, for example, 2015 to 2016, I've taken the opportunity to improve the engine and try and train myself rather than upgrading the boat all the time. There's a lot of things that go into upgrading the boat. We'll talk about some of those later on. Just wanted to give you an idea of how this evolves from one boat into the madness of a garage packed with boats. Till next time, keep your paddle in the water.